Let's be honest, our education system changes with every generation. Whether it's reading, writing, basic history, science and math, the way we used to learn changes all the time. But we're still left with many questions. Some answers are straightforward, others aren't. Often, we learn that history is more complicated than we thought and that assumptions we make about the past aren't always true. And what about the future? Is any of this even real? We joke, but seriously, 15 biggest lies we were taught in school. Stonehenge is a total mystery. Science has come a long way in understanding ancient civilizations. However, thanks to outdated educational materials and failures in funding, ancient ideals of the old world have long been solidified as the unknown. Stonehenge is one such historical location that's well understood but widely misunderstood. Researchers say they've discovered the likely origin of the huge stones which form the prehistoric famed circle of giant stones. The otherworldly construction has fascinated the world as far back as the Middle Ages, long inspiring the imaginations of millions of British explorers and tourists. Mystical and extraterrestrial theories of plenty have emerged pertaining to its origins. Beliefs about who built Stonehenge and why have included reports it was erected by the ancient Romans. Today's leading theory suggests ancient Druid priests created Stonehenge and many modern scholars agree that it was a burial ground of ancient civilizations. It was also long believed that the construction could never be mimicked in modern times, but a replication attempt, like shown in this image, proved that it could indeed be replicated. Are we still being lied to? Is this the answer we were never told? The judgment falls to you! Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. One of the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen, the ancient Egyptians ruled over the lower reaches of the Nile for millennia. After a unified kingdom arose around 3100 BC, a series of dynasties and pharaohs built ever bigger pyramids and temples before falling to the Roman Empire in 30 BC. During this incredible era, the ancient Egyptians produced some of the most famous monuments in the world dedicated to various deities or the pharaohs themselves. But what if they were originally something else, as these images imply? The ancient Egyptians were masters at concealing hidden rooms and temples, even cities, within massive monuments just like this. But what if the Sphinx were actually intended to be concealed by even bigger monuments of the god Anubis? Think about it. For the ancient Egyptians, Anubis was the god of death, mummification, embalming, the afterlife, cemeteries, tombs, and the underworld. It was usually depicted as a canine or a man with a canine head. Such was the ingenuity and engineering prowess of the ancient Egyptians. It does seem possible. Just saying. Are we on to something here? Let us know in the comments below with the hashtag sweet topic. Chameleons change colors to blend in. From popular human media and marketing to stories, creatures often are attributed with traits that aren't authentic to reality. The fact that chameleons change color to blend in is one of them. Sorry if that ruins all your cartoon fantasies. While they can change colors, the purpose and method in which they do so is a bit misguided. It's a common misconception that they camouflage against their background. In reality, they change color to regulate their temperatures or signal their intentions to other chameleons. They aren't so worried about the predators around them to use it for this purpose. Since they're cold-blooded, meaning they can't generate their own body heat, alternating the color of their skin is the most effective way to manage a favorable body temperature with their surroundings. A cold specimen might turn dark in an effort to absorb more heat, whereas a warmer one may turn pale to reflect the sun. Makes sense, right? They also utilize bold colors to communicate with others in the species. Males shift in bright variations to signal their dominance of the area and turn dark in aggressive situations. Females can shift color to inform males if they accept them as a mate. Slaves built the pyramids. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus once described the pyramid builders as slaves this notion created what Egyptologists now say is a myth, solidified in public opinion by Hollywood and other forms of entertainment. Graves of the pyramid builders were first discovered in 1990, after a tourist traveling on horseback stumbled over a tomb. 
Archaeologists say that discovery and the latest revelations show that the workers were actually paid laborers. They went on to say that the builders came from poor Egyptian families from all across the land and were highly respected for their work. This is evident and those who died during their construction were bestowed honors of being buried in the tombs near the sacred pyramids of the pharaohs. While the tombs contained no gold or valuables, they were said to safeguard them from tomb raiders throughout ancient times. The bodies within were found in the fetal position, with the head pointing west and their feet east. Also, according to ancient Egyptian beliefs, they were surrounded by jars once filled with supplies for their journey in the afterlife. The people who constructed the last remaining wonder of the ancient Egyptian world ate meat regularly and worked in three-month shifts, according to discovered work calendars. Ancient blueprints also revealed that it took nearly 10,000 workers more than 30 years to build a single pyramid. That's only a tenth of the workforce of 100,000 that Herodotus later reported after visiting Egypt around 450 BC. <laughs> there is no gravity in space. Sure, we see all those videos of astronauts doing cool no-gravity type things while on board the International Space Station, but that isn't exactly accurate. Sure, there's extremely little gravity, but there's indeed gravity in space, and it's all caused by a little thing called microgravity. Microgravity can be defined as the condition for which people or objects appear to be weightless. The effects of microgravity can be seen as described before. While astronauts and objects float about in space-like conditions, it can be experienced in other ways too, not just space. Micro refers to very small, so it denotes to the condition where gravity is little. In this state, heavy objects move around easily. It's sometimes called zero gravity, but this name is a bit misleading. A tiny amount of gravity can be found everywhere in space, according to astronomers. Gravity is what holds the moon in orbit around the Earth. It forces Earth to orbit the sun. It holds the sun in place within the Milky Way galaxy. You see, it's everywhere, necessary even. It does, however, become weaker with distance. It's said to be possible for spacecraft to travel far enough from Earth that a human inside could feel the differences. This phenomena is not why things float on a spacecraft in orbit. The International Space Station, for instance, orbits Earth as an altitude between 200 and 250 miles. At that altitude, Earth's gravity is about 90% of what it is on the planet's surface. To put it into perspective, if a person weighed 100 pounds on Earth's surface should climb a ladder all the way to the space station, that person would weigh 90 pounds at the top of the ladder. That little bit of gravity difference allows all those cool tricks you see. You can see the Great Wall of China from space. The Great Wall of China is certainly an impressive construction, especially for an ancient civilization who didn't have the help of robots and heavy machinery at least not in the sense we understand it today. That's not to mention the help of bird's eye view devices like planes, satellites and drones to survey the area. These ancient geniuses managed to do it all better without that staff and make a lasting mark on the planet until its last day. The impressive world wonder sure is huge, but not so much that it can be seen from space as it's been told for many years. Heck. One look through Google Earth yourself can testify to that. If even the landscape for which the wall built barely shows up as a blip from a space or satellite imagery, it's hard to imagine that the wall would appear. After all, though the wall may be impressive, the landscape for which it was built is far superior in vastness and scale. Believe it or not, this claim started back in 1904. After a long 65 years of waiting, Apollo astronauts finally confirmed this to be incorrect. They could not see the Great Wall from space. Bats are blind. It all comes down to how we have to define sight. Is sight just seeing? By that note alone, other creatures see far more layers of reality as do humans over them. The point is, sight is unique to the individual and therefore processing of their brain. Ever heard that bats are blind? This couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, bats have incredible sight, according to experts. Some bats, including a few species of fruit bats, have exceptional vision, three times better than that of a human. 
The myth that they're blind stems from the fact that bats fly very close to objects. This is more a matter of curiosity than bad eyesight and poor flight skills. They also don't rely on eyesight to navigate in flight thanks to their superior echolocation ability. Echolocation is essentially a piercing sound wave created by bats that allows them to see the world in three-dimensional sight. The sound waves bounce off objects and return to the bats, mapping out for them precisely where trees, structures, and even other animals and prey are. That's actually why bats fly so close to objects without smashing into them. Humans can't hear the sound wave because they're made at higher frequencies than humans can perceive. Van Gogh chopped his ear off. He may be known as the tortured genius who chopped off his own ear, but what is the true story behind Van Gogh's injury? The classic tale about his legendary act of self-harm tells of a disturbed Dutch painter who severed his earlobe in a fit of lunacy after he had a fight with his friend. This happened shortly before Christmas in 1888. A new book argues that Van Gogh made the whole story up to protect his friend, who accidentally lopped it off in the heat of an argument with a fencing sword. Despite them being rivals professionally, the two respected each other. Historians have since said that the genuine story has never surfaced because the two men kept a pact of silence. They say that Van Gogh didn't want to get his friend into any trouble. Christopher Columbus Discovered America Many were taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, but the real story of who actually discovered North America is far more complicated than we've been led to believe. It's actually a difficult question to answer. The true history of the land's exploration stretches back long before Columbus was even born. A more accurate question we should be asking is whether Christopher Columbus discovered America before other Europeans. Even that was proven far too easy an answer, and modern research now suggests that a group of Icelandic Norse explorers beat Columbus to the punch by around 500 years. And of course, Native Americans live there. The truth of the matter is, we have no idea who first discovered America. As far as we know, there was always someone who predates someone that discovered it. Throughout the years, scholars have suspected that humans from Asia, Africa, and even Ice Age Europeans may have reached America first. There's even a popular legend about a band of Irish monks who made the journey in the 6th century. <laughs> An apple falls on Newton's head. Legend tells that a young Isaac Newton once sat beneath an apple tree when he was smacked on the head by a falling piece of fruit. This moment has become a modern meme of the aha moment. The 17th century incident was said to have inspired him with the law of gravity theory. It's all poetic and cinematic, but in reality, things didn't go down so fantastical. Newton was born of a farmer in 1642 near Grantham, England. He applied and was accepted into Cambridge University in 1661. Four years later, following an outbreak of the infamous bubonic plague, the college temporarily closed, forcing Newton back into his childhood home. It was during this break that, while he was in the orchard there, he observed apples dropping from the trees. There's no evidence to suggest the fruit literally lumped him on the head, but Newton's observation indeed inspired him to ponder the question why apples always fall straight to the ground rather than sideways or upward. It may make sense now, but this type of thinking changed much. It helped inspire him to eventually develop his law of universal gravitation. Newton first published this principle in 1687. It states that everything in the universe is attracted to every other thing, with a force that's directly proportional to the product of their masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. His genius works, the Principia, also features his laws of motion. Bulls hate red From cartoons to actual bullfighting shows, it was long taught that bulls hate the color red, so much so that they enrage and charge at just the sight of it. This was thus used for entertainment purposes in modern media and shows, but somewhere along the line got lost in translation. Tests showed that bulls elicit the same exact reaction to white capes and blue capes as they did to red capes, thus determining it has little to do with the color, and more so in the way that capes were being waved in their faces. Further research even revealed that bulls only became interested to charge when the capes had earlier irritated them in some form. If the color doesn't matter to the bull, 
Why are the capes red? The answer has more to do with the audience and entertainment value than it does the bull. The over-elaborate costumes and red capes are considered an important part of the culture of traditional bullfighting. In the same way that sports teams always wear the same color, the red capes are part of the bullfighting uniform. However, the sport is far from being as popular as it was because in many countries, they still kill the bull when the fight is done. <coughs> Camel's humps store water. Camels have long been famed for their ability to go weeks at a time without needing a sip of water, such an ability that makes them effective pack animals for those seeking to travel across arid-like deserts. The creatures have earned the nickname Ships of the Desert and to this day are a necessary part of transportation and trade in said areas. The creatures aesthetically are well known for their prominent humps on their back. Typically, they have one or two lumps, depending on the species. This has led to the belief that they are used to store water for access at a later time. This is inaccurate, as the camel's humps actually store fatty tissues used as a source of nourishment when food is scarce, not water. That makes them even more amazing, knowing that they can do the same thing with food that we thought they could with water. They can indeed survive the harshest of conditions and for weeks at a time, if you see a camel walking around with so-called deflated humps, then you know they've gone a long time without eating. The body knows how to metabolize the humps when necessary. Blood is blue. Some people believe that blood, while inside the body, is actually blue. This is not the case. Even when you get blood drawn and it goes from your hermetically sealed body to the vacuum sealed tubes, it's clearly red. Many people argue that it turns red when it hits oxygen which would make this process safe to contain blue blood. Obviously, this isn't the case. Blood is red because of red blood cells, or hemoglobin. Blood somewhat changes colors when it absorbs oxygen, but not enough to fully change the color as the myth suggests. In all actuality, the only reason the colors look like anything to the naked eye is because of how light is being refracted from the tissue back to the human eye. While in the body, our blood is bright red because of its nutrient-rich and flowing state. If it hits oxygen, it simply turns a darker red at best, never blue. Some creatures do have blue blood, but it's because the protein transporting oxygen in their blood is actually blue. Diamonds come from coal. Diamonds were once pieces of coal that have been transformed under high pressure and temperature, correct? That is the pervading idea, but it's actually false. It's an old wives' tale. In actuality, diamonds are essentially much older than plants, which is the main ingredient for the formation of coal naturally. The time it takes for an actual diamond to form is unknown and requires too many variables to answer entirely. Some are capable of materializing in days, while others can take weeks or months. Most take millions of years. Diamonds are often hundreds of millions of years old, with many dating back 1 to 3 billion years and the obvious reason why they fetch such a high price. Supply versus demand, after all. Diamond growth isn't always a continuous process, meaning it can start and stop based on the conditions of which it finds itself. A diamond often encounters interruption because of a change in temperature or pressure within the crust. Thus, it could rest for hundreds of millions of years before conditions are appropriate for growth. Being cold causes a cold. Bundle up, you don't want to catch a cold. You might have heard it a million times, but how true is the idea that staying warm keeps you from catching a cold? In actuality, being cold has nothing to do with you getting sick or not. The physical act of being cold cannot onset a sickness, though they are related. Being extremely cold reduces your immune system effectiveness, so that makes forgetting a cold easier. Something is floating in the air, someone cold is more likely to catch something than someone warm. It doesn't make it any less or more true. You simply improve or decrease your chances of contracting something already present. There's a reason us humans have an immune system. There are ways to improve and decline it on a number of levels. Being cold is one such way. While being bundled up is still sound advice, it isn't necessarily from the cold itself. <laughs> Milk is good for you. The dairy industry spent billions of dollars in instilling the notion that milk is a miracle food. For years, they got away with such marketing, 
and only recently have modern studies revealed this to be false. It's not necessarily bad for you, but it's far less healthy than the companies would make you believe. While milk is still amazing for building strong bones, it isn't as necessary to do that even. The news researcher has seen a huge decline in average dairy consumption, and the rise of lactose intolerant people has put a huge damper on their bottom line as well. Milk does have a lot of nutrients like vitamin D, protein, and calcium, but especially convenient for kids who are less likely to have a broader diet. For adults, they tend to get those nutrients elsewhere, and thus the bad things of milk take priority on the body, making it less healthy for adults than it is for kids needing the extra requirement in their diet. As we get older, we should seek to get these nutrients from leafy greens, beans, lentils, and seafood instead.